One week in the books for the Penn State baseball team. The 2024 season is underway. Penn State goes 3-1 and one in its opening weekend of action, including a 6-5 to five extra inning win to start the Mike Gambino era on Friday against Monmouth, then came back another 4-3 win against Army on Saturday, and then wrapped up the weekend with a 12-4 to four victory against Army on Sunday. Brian Tripp, Tyler Millen will break down the opening weekend of baseball. Tyler will chat with the Big Ten Player of the Week, junior catcher Matt Maloney coming up, and I'll chat with Director of Player Development and Alumni Relations Ryan Wheeler here on this week's Penn State Baseball Show. But Tyler, strong starting pitching in those first two games from a guy that we expect it from, and Travis Lindsman, then Frankie Sanchez making his Penn State debut in game number two. Freshman Mason Butash with a really good outing to, to bookend the weekend as well. And then timely hitting, Maloney obviously had a great weekend. Five for eight at the plate, 11 RBIs. We'll hear from him in a moment. But also some timely hitting as well from different guys throughout that Penn State baseball lineup. I thought it was a great building block going down to carry for four games to start the season. Yeah, absolutely. Any any time you can come out of a four game set with a winning record, it's a pretty good weekend. You yeah. know, as, as you as you mentioned, poised veteran at bats by by guys like Matt Maloney, Adam Ciceri, Taven Kelly. These are guys mm-hmm. that have played a lot of college baseball and were able to put together key at bats in in the one run wins, and that's crucial to be able to go down to carry North Carolina and come away with three wins. The guy that I was really impressed with was Anthony Steele. Out of yeah. the back end of the bullpen with four and two inning, four and two thirds innings, seven strikeouts, no walks. Right, that that's the command that you're looking for from a guy that has a wipeout slider, key off speed mm-hmm. pitches, and a fastball that can you know blaze by anybody. So, really strong opening weekend. Really good things that we saw from a wide variety of pitchers, as you mentioned. This is a staff that has some pieces that are really going to be able to contend. I think it was fun to see different arms get the opportunity to bridge that gap between the starters and Steele to pitch in that game three for Penn State. You know, Jaden Henline didn't work this weekend, even though Coach Gambino said he was going to go. So hopefully he's back into that Penn State rotation soon. And then a guy like Joe Chikonsky at the plate, six for 10. You know, a lot of really good things to build on. Now a great opportunity to go on the road and take on Stanford this weekend. Yeah, Stanford is one of those teams that's a college baseball powerhouse. They've produced MLB talent year after year. Mike Gambino has said that he wants to produce major leaguers out of this Penn State program. And this weekend, Penn State is going to be playing some of you know major leaguers' future stars. So this is a, a, a key challenge for Penn State to elevate its competition and for some of those younger arms, those key poised leaders at the plate to step up and produce some key wins out in California. Yeah, I think it's a great opportunity, a great measuring stick early in the year, and you can find out what you have. So without further ado, we promised a couple of interviews here on our weekly show. Tyler had a chance to catch up with the catcher and Big Ten Player of the Week, Junior Matt Maloney. Tyler Millen, excited to be joined by Junior Catcher Matt Maloney on the Penn State Baseball Show. Matt, an exceptional weekend for you down in Cary, North Carolina. Hit 625, a home run, 11 RBIs. What was working well for you this past weekend? Uh, I don't know. I just, my mind was clear. Um, I just really want to win a couple of games, like getting behind the boys and just winning baseball games is nothing like anything else. So just that, that's what worked, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And you captured big 10 player of the week honors Monday afternoon. What does that recognition mean to you? Uh, you know, I told my coaches, like, I don't really play for that. Like I play for, play for wins. And it's just a stepping stone. We're really focused on the process over here. And like our process gets us to these higher rewards. But in the end, we celebrate our process and our lower like accomplishments and hopefully gets us to bigger places. And diving a little deeper into the process, where would you say that you've grown the most um, as a catcher and um, hitting at at the plate? Um, Honestly, as a leader, um, I've become more vocal. I was like a quiet kid growing up and getting behind these guys is, is like so easy. Like I love every one of them. Like it's awesome. Um, we'll dive a little deeper into the pitching staff. Guys like Frankie Sanchez, Anthony Steele, Travis Lindsman, Mason Butash, among others that all pitched really well this past weekend. It's a really healthy blend of veteran arms, younger arms in this staff. How has your connection with the pitching unit developed? Um, throughout the early part of the season? It started since day one. So I got here in the fall, like coming in, I was a new guy with a new coaching staff. And um, 
I told Coach Gambino from the beginning, like, I want to be the quarterback. I want to get in. Like, these guys are my linemen. I want them to trust me. Like, just get have them get behind me, have me get behind them. Like, bet this back and forth has really been, like, it's been perfect. And as a guy that's from New England, with Gambino being, all, you know, also with, you know, New England ties, what was that familiarity like, you know, when you were going through the transfer process? It was really just a breath of fresh air. Um have another New England guy on the staff. Like, honestly, everyone's from New England on the staff. And it was nice because, like, I talked to him a little bit in high school, got recruited by him, and it was nice. Um, yeah. And diving a little deeper into those into those ties, your dad played college baseball at UMass Lowell. Uh, what was that dynamic like growing up having having your dad um, as oh, someone who, you know, had Division I uh, baseball experience? You know, ever since I was like six, I don't even know. But as soon as I could touch a baseball, I was at the field from like ever since I woke up. I've been begging him to go to the field. Like I'd wake him up at six a.m. Just go to the field. We were there till lunch, and then we'd go get lunch, and then we'd come back, and we just more baseball. <laughs> <laughs> and as someone, you know, as you said, that played baseball at the time, you played for a pretty pretty strong high school at Central, you know, Central Catholic and Lawrence. Pretty stacked roster, guys like Steve Hajar is with the Guardian system, Donna, Dominic Keegan, you know, who's with the Rays. You know, how did playing in that environment and learning from from Keegan as as a catcher, you know, kind of help you in your development? So I played with them, too, like, in a travel ball at show, and, like, I learned so much from yep. them every single day, like, in high school and travel ball. Like, yep. like, these guys are just, the, like, some of the smartest people I've ever met, and, like, just learn a little bit from them every time I see them. It's just, it just goes such a long way. And, you know, you grew up in, in Wyndham, New Hampshire. So I got to ask you, what what are some of your more favorite Red Sox memories growing up? Oh, God. I, I honestly, Shane Victorino hitting the home run oh, yeah. in, the, in the World Series. Hawaiian. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's awesome. He's one of my, one of my all time greats. Like Mookie Betts. Seeing Ortiz hit five, was it 500? Was it 500? Yep. Yeah, down yep. in uh, down in Tampa against in the Rays. Tampa, yep, him, 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 five hundred on a bad team, but <laughs> I was like, no, I was like, and then going from last to first. Honestly, that was my biggest yeah. like. That was a shock that no one could ever see. Yeah, I was always a big Dustin Pedroia fan growing up, and playing second oh, yeah. base wanted to emulate myself after him. So, oh, yeah. um, with Stanford coming up this weekend, what's the excitement level like? You know, to face a historically strong program. We're excited. We're excited to go in, go down. Um, we just want to go get some wins. We want to get three wins this weekend and just, just keep it on stacking on great days. Matt, thank you so much for, for joining the show. Appreciate the time. No problem. Thank you. Tyler, great stuff there from Matt. Really enjoyed that conversation. He just seems like a fun guy to be around. And, of course, you guys had the whole Red Sox connection going on. Yeah, absolutely. Always good when I can talk with a fellow New Englander and uh, talk some Red Sox baseball and talk some of my favorites of all time. So Matt's one of the best. Now Ryan Wheeler joins us here on the program. We'll, we'll memorialize one of the great coaches that this program's ever had, my conversation with Ryan Wheeler. Well, he's back in Happy Valley as the Director of Program Development and Alumni Relations, Ryan Wheeler, a familiar face to many. Wheels, appreciate the time today. Thanks so much for joining us here on the show. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. I just mentioned your title. First of all, what brought you back to, to Happy Valley and what you've enjoyed about your time back here so far? Well, you know, ever since the time I graduated, uh, it was always a goal to try to get back here to Penn State because, uh, you know, this place has done so much for me, not only in my career, but for my life. So uh, to have the opportunity to, to come back was just uh, something that I couldn't, couldn't turn down. What was it about this opportunity with Coach Gambino's staff? And can you explain to those watching what you are doing in your involvement and role in the program? Yeah, for well, I know Coach Gambino has been uh, trying to meet as many people as possible. So in the first six, seven months here, um, you know, he's he's met a lot of people. But if, if you haven't met him yet, uh, not only a tremendous coach, but a tremendous person. And, um, you know, he is going to do great things for this program. The staff that we've put together, phenomenal coaches, very, very good at what they do. And, you know, we are really excited about the future of Penn State baseball. 
you know, my role with the program now is is kind of overseeing uh, just the operations of everything that we do. Um, so my hands are involved in in all the aspects of the program and, and setting the foundation for how we want to do things moving forward. And, um, you know, it's been it's been a thrill to be back. Uh, I'm, I'm busier than you can imagine, uh, but excited for for the direction the program is headed. Hey, you mentioned that direction, that vision. What has impressed you about the vision that not just Coach Gambino has, but your entire staff has for getting this thing in the right direction and building off what was a great weekend in Cary last weekend? Yes. Oh, and, you know, before mentioning Coach Gambino's vision, uh, I think it needs to be said that, uh, you know, Pat Kraft, our athletic director, and Vinnie James, you know, have really made uh, the baseball program uh, here a priority and, and have really put forth uh, some resources to allow us to be successful. But, um, you know, being an alum of, of Penn State, I know for, for, for many years we've, we've watched the program and, and, you know, maybe it's fallen a little bit short of the success that we think it should have. And so, you know, in order to bring that back, um, you know, the vision for, for Coach Gambino is to really hit the recruiting trail hard, uh, to build a really positive culture here in the program and, you know, go out and, and win some ball games. Um, <laughs> there's been a lot of work behind the scenes that people, you know, don't see. Uh, but it started to show up a little bit last weekend, you know, on, on the field. And uh, I thought we played, you know, I thought we played pretty well. We obviously have some mm -hmm. things to work on, but uh, to go three and one on the opening weekend uh, was a really good start to the season. And you talk about great coaches and you obviously played for a great coach during your time here at Penn State from yeah. 1991 to 1994. And on Friday, the sad news that Joe Hindelang passed away, the winningest coach in Penn State history at 78 years old. First of all, what were your reactions when you heard the news? And, and what did Coach Hindelang mean to you and the Penn State baseball program? Yeah, and, and I mean, even now, I'm still a little emotional about it. Um, you know, I will say that for me personally, uh, Coach Hindelang, he changed my life. Uh, I, I was not recruited by him. I was recruited by the, the coach before him, a man named Shorty Stoner. And, you know, when Coach Hindelang came in, he obviously was putting his own touches on the program and was going to make some changes, uh, one of which was uh, cutting the roster size down. Back then, it was unlimited. So we had about 45 or 46 players, and he was going to cut it down to 32. And so my first goal was uh, I redshirted my freshman year. And, you know, this guy doesn't know me. He didn't recruit me. Um, so I was just concerned with making the roster, uh, one of those 32, which I did. And, you know, from there, um, the, the rest is sort of history as far as my career here. Um, but beyond my career here then, because I stayed in the game of baseball, you know, I kept in touch with coach for, for a number of years. Uh, you know, there were some, some dry spells in there at times, but I would say over the last 15 years, uh, because of my job at Temple, being the head coach at Temple, where he was an alum, he was very active in uh, helping support that program. And, and then he was, you know, very excited and active with, uh, you know, helping me to get back here to Penn State. And so, you know, I knew coach was, was not well and, and his health wasn't well. So it wasn't a complete shock, the news on, on Friday, but uh, it still was, I still had a heavy heart and still do uh, because, you know, I know he not only impacted me, but the number of text messages that I've been receiving from, from former players or guys that played for him uh, at other schools um, has been tremendous. And, and I know he touched a lot of lives. Really quick, his resume, 389 wins for, Penn State, while he was here, the 1996 Big Ten Coach of the Year, took the team, obviously, to the 2000 Super Regional against Texas mm -hmm. after defeating North Carolina. And I think over those 14 seasons, you know, you made 184 straight starts, but you look at names like Michael Campo and Sean Fagan and Nate Bump. What what will Coach Hindelang's lasting legacy be with what he accomplished here at Penn State? Oh, boy. Um you and know. It may just be the people he's impacted and touched during yeah. his career that you can yeah. think and speak most to. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I know a number of those guys personally. We've had some mm -hmm. some text messages back and forth. Um, I mean, if you know Coach Hindelang, he was a little quirky. Uh, and so th those quirks, you know, thinking back on them, 
we've laughed, you know, we've, I've talked on the phone with some of these guys and we've laughed about them or we've, we've exchanged emails and texts uh, and things like that. But at the end of the day, he, uh, he truly had an impact on, you know, so many people. And as a coach, uh, you know, I hope I'm having that same impact on players. And, and I hope that, you know, someday when my time is done and, and I pass, uh, that, that players look back in a positive way and that I, I had a positive impact on their lives just like Coach did for many of us. Wheels, we appreciate you taking the time to share what brings you back to Happy Valley, what you're doing now with the program, but also reflect on a great coach and one of the greatest coaches in Penn State baseball history. Thanks so much, and uh, good luck at Stanford this weekend. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Tyler, a great conversation there with Ryan as well. What a great week of baseball we have ahead. Penn State at Stanford coming up this weekend. Thanks again for the time on the show this week. Always great coming on. Thanks, Trip.